the XV, where he said the person Jesus Christ was not bringing a religion, a, a code of ethics, nor a... Yeah, when I was reading here, there is something that had been raining around us, like you see youth doing religion, which they call traditionalist. Then they will tell you that it, it was the white man that brought religion to us. But forgotten that the culture they are calling culture, culture is the way of people live their life. Even in Christianity, we have a culture, the way we live Christ's life. There is not, when I was reading, it made me to meet someone, I told the person, there was the life they are living, not the life of Christ. It's not, uh, um, how am I going to put it? It's not a life which you can now because they post out to do it out there then they think that is the life they want to live but when you look at what they are living on you will see that they normally pour libation do incantation but that is not um culture like culture is when you come and our summer have the way they marry. Yoruba man have the way they marry. And Ibo man Tifi, that is culture. But what they are doing is tradi um, traditionally, which is invoking idols. That's what they are doing. Because there is something that Jesus Christ, um, the, the, the life of Jesus Christ, is the life like that teach this element, is the life of love. When you, that normally say, when you worship, what you worship is what you look like. When you go out there, you see that the life they are living, like, it's like darkness. You see, like, things that are not, even you, with your eye, you cannot withstand it. But when you come into the house of God, look at our altar. Everywhere is very beautiful. So, I was reading here, I said that it's not religion. The way people live out there, like, Traditional, they will tell you it's religion. Christian, Christianity is not a religion. It's a way of God's life, the way we want to live Christ's life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you so much for that. Christianity is not a religion. It is a life. Hallelujah. It's a life. And just like what he said, we need to, most times these people, they need people that will show them the truth. Hallelujah. We need to go out there and show them this is what, this is the main thing. This is the culture of the kingdom. Of course, mom has told us that true civilization started at the cross. Hallelujah. There is no civilization that is devoid. It was at the cross. That's where civilization began. Hallelujah. So that's why we need to go out there and show them these things. Show them that Christianity is beyond, you know, performing certain rituals. It's a lifestyle. It's a communion. It's a relationship with the living God. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the way to the Father. The Bible does not say he's a way to the Father. He is the way. So any other way, any other way is counterfeit. Praise God. Praise God. God bless you, sir. Okay, number three. Number three. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. From those, what the man said, from the time I read the Bible like it's having my eat bread, the Bible supplied the foundation for all the faith I needed. Despite the prognosis and all feelings of fear, I soon knew I was going to leave. Instead of dying in three months, I was out of the dead bed in seas. So I... Uh, from my experience, not even from what people say, I see that studying Bible will give you a foundation that even though you see many people talking about how did these people happen, how did they bring about uh, Adam, Eve, and every other thing, you'll be like shaking. Oh, it's like this, what these people are saying is really the truth. But I believe that if you spend much time in reading your Bible, you have to discover that a lot of things inside, even when they are talking, you, your mind shouldn't be there. Your mind and your face shouldn't be shaking. Reason, someone asked me, how do I manage my leisure time? What do I love doing? Because I, if I, I read, like, if I look at a movie that is not interesting, 
After watching it, I will be irritated. I will not even be happy. Reason I've wasted my time and didn't get anything from it. So I will be like, part of my leisure time is reading my Bible, studying my Bible. It must not be I must bring out time because many young girls and many of us will be like, how can I provide time to read Bible? I can bring out some, even though I bring out my book as in my phone and be reading the Bible, it's not as if I'm bringing out time. It's part of leisure time. I see reading Bible as enjoying Norway. Like the stories out there is more enjoying. And through that, you make your life stable and fit so that you can stay in every environment and without defeating anything in your feet. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Media, please put up that scripture where Jesus said that the man that hears my word and do it is like a man that digs um, the ground and puts his house on a rock. See, the Bible, we talk about the, the Bible, the scriptures. We are talking about the foundation of your life. Hallelujah. So, it's not something you trivialize. When we say study the word of God, you see, do your personal Christian devotion. Pray, study God's word. Because when you pray, that's where you get the enlightenment. The Holy Ghost breathes on the word. Praise God. Yes, you are here. And when you study the, the Bible, when you open the Bible to read, it does not open. Is, is looking like one closed book. No. Just pray. When you pray, the Holy Spirit opens your eyes into, it gives you revelation into the word of God. Hallelujah. The Bible says the letter kill it, but the spirit does what? Give it life. So it's when the Holy Ghost opens your eyes, he breathes into that word. Hallelujah. And when you start applying that word, because the word of God, as you read it, the end point is for you to apply it in your life. Hallelujah. The end point of studying God's word is what? Application. That's where wisdom comes in. In the book of Timothy, the Bible says, um, since when you were little, you have known the holy scriptures, which is able to make, you, to make you wise unto what? Salvation. So when you apply the word of God, it makes you wise. It makes you wise unto salvation. Praise God. So, please, I know we, we all have busy schedules. We are leading busy lives and all that. But please, Make sure in all your busyness, make out time to study the word. Because as the storms are blowing, as the waves of life and the economy and everything is blowing, he's still the one that has his foundation rooted on the word. Is the one that will be stable. Is the one that will be strong. Is the one that can stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Can we bow our heads this morning? Can we thank God for, for these words? Ask the Lord for the grace to apply. Ask the Lord for the grace to apply these things. are billowing and it's looking like things are happening around us. This is a time where our confidence is not in what we see or what's happening around us, but it's in Jesus, the one who has overcome the world for us. He said, he that is born of God has overcome the world. So it's this confidence that we have and we rest on this confidence and we trust the word of God for us.
got you where the victors crown. You're my help and my defender. You're my savior and my friend. By your grace I live and breathe to worship you. At the mention of your greatness, in your name I will bow down. In your presence fear is silent. For you wear the victor's crown. Let your glory fill this temple. Let your power overflow. By your grace and leave and free to worship.
It has overcome. For the fact it is born of God, everything that is thrown at him by the world, he has overcome it. Every sickness he has overcome it. Every disease he has overcome it. Depressive thinking he has overcome it. He is now above it. And he's oh I yeah, And he said, This is the victory. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. This is the victory. He didn't say, this shall be the victory. He didn't say, this will be the victory that will overcome. He said, this is. Anybody who is born of God, believes, has faith. And so that faith is not bringing victory. Because the faith is victory. So the person who believes is victory. Oh, you, the, the grammar is not good. The grammar is not good. The person who believes is victory. The person who believes is victory. Look at your neighbor. Find out if your neighbor believes. Tell the person your new name is victory. As your new name in the spirit is victory. You are victory. You are victory. You are victory. You are victory. Somebody shout, I have overcome. Because I believe. Say it again, I have overcome. Because I believe. Give somebody a high five. Tell them, I am an overcome. Thank <laughs> you. 
there's one stanza there's one stanza you know you you did where the grave could not contain him the grave could not con you know we are moving towards easter there are certain people there eh? your level now can no longer contain you wait to they said is cancer they said it's cancer that you have you have cancer it can't contain you anymore They said this hernia, it can't contain you anymore. There's somebody I'm seeing in my spirit, you are wearing bracelets on your leg. It can't contain you. That POP you are wearing, your leg will straighten out now as I'm speaking. Because the POP can no longer contain your leg. It will crack, it will open, your leg will come out healed and whole. Hallelujah. Hey. You know, usually we say something is about to happen. What I'm telling you now is something has happened. <laughs> hey, something has happened. Something has happened. Amen. 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 Please walk up to one, two, three, four, five persons. Tell them you are an overcomer. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. You are an overcomer. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. You are an overcomer. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Anybody that tells you otherwise has lied to you. The person has lied to you. Hallelujah. Give him praise and sit down. Give him praise and sit down. God bless you. Welcome to service. I want to welcome everybody. Those online, those offline, I want to welcome everybody. And by the dealings of God and the assurances from the Most High, I am believing strongly that God will do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or imagine and he's going to touch everybody in very unique ways this service is a service nobody will forget it will be a reference point for good there are some people your testimony has just begun yeah just started so I want to welcome everybody and get ready because it's going to be a good ride. Meanwhile, happy new month to you. Welcome to the third month and the last month of the first quarter. You see how the year is flying. We need to be the pilots. Time flies. We need to be able to manage it and control it and handle it well. Maximize every fleeting moment. Okay, so today is a double barrel service. It's communion service, but it's healing experience. Actually, for some people, your healing has taken place already. You've got it. You've got it. There are some people, you can check those areas. It has disappeared. It's gone. I hope you know, a lot of people wait till the word comes and prayer and whatever. Some people get there during praises. Some people get there during testimony time. Yeah, people are just free. Because God does not enter the service at the time of the word. He starts the service at the opening of the service. Actually, he even arrives before the service starts. That is why we call him your excellency. You know, there's a former governor of Anambra State. He said, why are you calling me excellency? When I come to meetings, I'm scheduled to come at this time. I don't come. So what's excellent about me? So if we call God, you know, sometimes we also sing it. The most excellency is Jesus. When we fix a meeting at eight, he's there. He's even there before the time. He said, where two or three are gathered in my name, that I'm there. So Jesus is here and he's going to touch everyone in very unique ways. Very unique ways. Today, I want to read a story, a very interesting story. And we're going to learn from it. Mark chapter 5, from verse 24 to verse 34. Ten verses. We're going to read them through. Then we discuss. Mark 5 from verse 24. Now we know the story. As we begin to read, you will know the story. A lot of us have gone through this story a couple of times. We don't want to take it from Luke's account. Because Luke also recorded this story. We want to take it from Mark's account. Because Luke was mild in his description. Mark was raw in his description. 
And I think I like Mark's own because he brought in some things that Luke did not consider. Being a physician. And Jesus went with him and much people followed him and thronged him. Look at the next verse. And a certain woman, I want us to be paying attention to certain things. A certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years. Yes. And has suffered many things of many physicians and has spent all that she had and was nothing bettered but rather grew worse. So the prognosis was bad. You know, today we were looking at some of the things that Yonggi Cho said about the prognosis. You know, he was diagnosed of incurable tuberculosis and the doctor said he would die in three months. So the prognosis was bad. But there was something that altered the prognosis and it will alter somebody's prognosis today. Okay, look at the next verse. And when she had heard of Jesus came in the press behind and touched his garment. Look at the next verse. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Yes. And straightway, the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. That thing was a plague. Yes. It plagued her. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him turned him about in the press and said who touched my clothes he knew exactly what the person touched who touched my clothes look at the next verse and his disciples said unto him thou seest the multitude thronging thee the problem is not with thronging the issue is with touching many people throng few people touch so he said the multitude thronged in thee and sayest thou who touched me so thronging and touching are not the same look at the next verse and he looked round about to see her that had done this thing yes but the woman fearing and trembling trembling knowing what was done in her came and fell down before him and told him all the truth look at the next verse and he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith. Notice what made her whole. It was faith. Her faith. Whose faith? Her faith. It was her faith that made her whole. Not the power in Jesus. It was her faith. Not the sonship. The deity. Of Jesus or the divinity of Jesus it was her faith that made her whole so faith is like a connector I could have power lines go past my house if I don't have a wire to connect I won't have power in my house so if I now get the wire and connect I can now tap in power into my house so what brought in power into my house what was what I used to connect. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that faith, he said, it's your faith that had made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Let us start at verse 24. I'm going to make about seven statements. Please listen carefully. Seven statements. First, and Jesus went with him and much who followed him and thronged him. Okay, next verse. Verse 25 and a certain woman the first statement i want to make is that god almighty is particular about people there is no person on earth that disappears from the radar of god god's eyes are upon everyone he sees everybody anywhere the person is now notice this woman the bible didn't even capture her name there are certain people like that in scripture that the bible will say and a certain man and certain lep a certain leper and four lepers some people are even described by their ailments not their names this time so this one is a certain woman i want to let you know that as you are sitting right where you are or as you are listening from where you are listening 
God knows you in particular. He knows that you are listening now. He sees what is happening to you now, right now. He knows what you are going through. He knows your predicament. He knows your issue. He knows it. That's the first statement I want to make. Even in your darkest hour, God knows you are in that hour. He's aware of it. There are some people who begin to think that when they get into certain situations and circumstances that God tends to forget them. No. God will not forget you. Aren't you happy about that? That God knows you in particular. You can imagine how particular God is about concerning you. How particular he is concerning you. That he said in his word that your hairs are not counted. They are numbered. The hairs on your head are not counted. He has numbered them. So there's hair 421. There's hair 127. There's hair 69. There's hair 24. Anyone that falls, he knows. He knows that that one is going to fall before it falls. That is how particular God is about you. If he is this particular about you, why would he not be particular about your issue? And Jesus stopped it this way. He said, O ye of little faith. If he knows your location, you know, in this part of the world and in this part of the country, you know, we don't have clear, clear addresses. Even with the way our addresses are, it doesn't confuse God. You know, you want to ask somebody to come to your house. You can't tell the person. It's difficult. I know it's obtainable in some places. But it's difficult to tell the person, uh, number 12, bishop, whatever, close. Just once you get there, you see the house. But you know how we describe it. Stop at the aswama. There's one aswama drum side. Once you stop there, turn right. You see the road opposite. Can you see the road opposite? Yeah, on third road, yes. <laughs> Follow that road. If you go, there's a greenhouse. You will see. At the base of the greenhouse is a restaurant, a buka. If you see that buka, there's another person selling chicken parts by the side. Then look opposite it. You now see a house that has a small window. This old window that they use wood to, you know, to make. Then beside it is a path. If you now get through that path, you now turn. At the back of it, you now see a gate. Beside the gate is another path. <laughs> they have not got to your house. So <laughs> By the time you finish describing your house, data has finished. <laughs> Yet you have not got to the place. <laughs> you know, not to talk of your house appearing on Google Map. You type it in, Google says, not understandable. That is, it's not as though it's not on the map. That's, they don't even understand what you are talking about. In spite of that, heaven's Google map captures your location. He knows where you are. Google may not know, but there's a system higher than Google. He can pick up your location. And may I announce to somebody here today, God has remembered you. Today. First statement. Second statement. The woman had an issue. Now, what's the implication of an issue? And if you look at that, she had had that issue for 12 years. Okay. 12 is a number of government. When God wanted to establish his chosen nation, his son nation. Among all the nations of the world, he picked one nation, one man, Abraham, and through him, he raised the nation of Israel. And that nation of Israel is sitting on 12 tribes. That's the number of government, 12. When Jesus came and wanted to run his ministry on earth, he was governmental in nature. A kingdom that will rule. 
he established it on 12 men. When God started designing the new Jerusalem, he had 12 foundations and 12 gates. So 12 is the number of government, which means this woman's predicament had started ruling her identity. That is why the Bible says she was a woman with the issue. It became an issue. So all over her community, it was her identification. It was the issue she had and it was known to all. You know, there's a type of issue you have for a protracted period that you now take it as your cross. He said, this one let, is the portion of burden God gave to me to carry on it. Because it has lasted for a long time. So the person now relegates himself or herself and then accepts that thing as a necessary burden. So somebody's issue may not be of blood. You know, this type of thing is when the person is passing, maybe going to market, you want to point as a look at that. The issue has taken over her name. So the issue is now an issue of blood. If you see her along the road and you get home and you want to tell somebody at home that you saw her, say, remember that was which woman? The one with the issue of blood. Say, okay, that one. Yes. Was that her name again? I have forgotten. It's her issue I remember. So, some people are now accustomed to chronic fear. Is their issue. Fear. Now, the thing has not happened, but they are creating it. The situation is not available anywhere around them. It may not even be available in the next 10 years. But they create it in them. That's, they are afraid of things in advance. Things that have not happened and are not likely to happen. But they create it and are afraid of their creation. So it's their own issue. Fear. Some people is a protracted issue like this. A disease. You say, okay, this disease is something on Atalichi. You know, a bumputowa. Something that I came, came with from my creator. So it's this one. All of us in our family, we do not have children, or we do not have spouses, or we do not have. Is a mother's rate. Uh, we we'll take it like that. Is our own portion of the cross that we we'll carry. I don't know if you know people that are like that. There are some people in business never do well. Say your father didn't do well, your mother didn't do well, your cousin, your uncle, your whatever, all the people did not do well, and then it's your turn. It is a, you know, there's somebody, oh, 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 oh. One day, a rich man came and visited us. A rich uncle, a rich uncle visited us. And when he left, one of my uncles that's not rich called me and told me, Leave all these people that are wealthy. It is Akarakafa. Our own is poverty. That's what they told me in my ears. Said, if I nataluchuku, what we obtain from God is poverty. Then I didn't know much. But it didn't go well with me, even at that. When I grew up a little bit, I said, no. How come? Poverty. My bet right. Mbano. It can be. How can God finish creating me and cover our poverty? No, the lines are falling for me in pleasant places. Poverty cannot be a pleasant place. You know this type of thing that happened some years ago between Cameroon and Nigeria concerning Bakasi Peninsula. So when the court gave them, they carved in Bakasi Peninsula into Cameroon. That's how when God wants to give you an inheritance, he carves your inheritance along the lines of good and pleasant things. So he carves the bad ones out and carves the good ones in and causes you to walk in the good ones. That is what the Bible says, the lines have fallen to me in pleasant places.
and I have a goodly heritage. I said, no, those things I had then, no, 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 it can't be. God can't cover up poverty as my portion. I reject it, I refuse it. I started refuting it, refusing it, rejecting it, exiting it, kicking it out. And that's how I kicked it out of my life. Poverty is not good. Let me say it calmly. You see, poverty is not good. Anybody that is poor is sick. Actually, the person is worse hit by sickness than somebody with terminal tuberculosis. Poverty kills. Once poverty comes, it starts killing. Even though the person is walking around, the person has died. See, eh? Poverty is an enemy. Kill it. Let it not hang around your mind, not one day, not one moment. Let it not hang around you. Anyway, that's not what I'm talking about. So, he had, she had the issue of blood 12 years. For some people, you know, this issue was in her body. For some people, it's in their mind. For some people, it's in their marriage. They have that issue in their marriage. You know, there are some parents, they give birth to children and right from tender age, the children don't show particular brilliance in anything. They now say, well, since children are heritage from the Lord, that's what I've inherited from the Lord. Somebody say no. It might have lasted for a while. That doesn't make it God's plan. Now, let me show something else. Please give us an exercise. I may not say it in the exact, you know, whatever, but at some point we'll now make it to have a logical sense because that's how Mark now put it. And has suffered many things of many physicians and has spent all that she had and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. So the prognosis was bad. And is on record that she had sought medical intervention. But medical intervention did not help her. Rather, she grew worse. Now, there's a time we were discussing it that uh, maybe it's not documented by scripture. It's just my thought. I don't know if you are getting what I'm saying. It's just my, what I want to say now is my thought, not scripture. Maybe that one of the reasons her treatment did not work was because there were some dubious people that were producing fake drugs that the doctors were using. Fake drugs. So the doctors will be administering drugs. Patient get well, who sigh? The patient will be getting worse. There may even be some physicians that are quacks that she also patronized. So, but the point was that she patronized or sought divine I mean, medical intervention. There are some people who have patronized therapists. Say this fear thing, this discouragement thing, this low self-esteem, this uh, suicidal tendency thing. I must seek for a therapist. This marriage, this is my marriage that is, I must seek for a marriage counselor. The more the marriage counselor is sought for, the more the marriage cracks. No respite. So that's the next thing. Okay. The next one. The next statement I want to. When she heard. She had heard of Jesus. When she had heard of Jesus. Please can you give it to us in Amplified. Please. This verse in Amplified. She had heard the reports. Concerning Jesus. So the next statement I want, I want to make. Is that she heard about Jesus she heard something and what she heard was about Jesus she heard something what she heard was about Jesus what she heard was about those who had that issue no what did I say what she heard was not about those who had that issue and died 
what she heard was not about the statistics of people who have died from having that issue or who had that issue till death. That was not what she heard. Because one of the vital things that determines a man's outcome is what he hears. Now, in our world and society, everybody, maybe let me not say everybody, most people want to talk. Go to social media, internet. Everybody who appears there wants to say something. Everybody seems to know something to say and will want to say it. And finally will say it. Everybody has a picture to post. Everybody has a video to make. Everybody has something to project. And once you get there, you must hear something. You're going to read about something. You're going to hear about something. You have to hear about something. The point is that once we are alive, we'll be hearing things. But what we hear is dependent on the choices we make. The things we choose to hear, we hear. The things we choose not to hear, we will not hear. What produces faith is not the any type of frequency. The only frequency that produces faith is the frequency that God broadcasts. So that frequency is called the frequency of the word of God. That is what produces faith. The same way faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, fear comes by the reverse. So if I hear, I hear the words of men, the opinions of man, I hope I know or we know that sometimes when you have a problem with your home or with your health, okay, let's assume, let's assume that you start feeling some symptoms. One a pain in your heart, your chest region, one pain. Meanwhile, there's somebody you have a pain in your chest, ache. Before I finish talking, it will disappear. You look for it, it will be gone. So you have that thing. You now quickly say, hey, what is this? You now quickly go to your friend and tell your friend, this is what I'm experiencing. Hey, the friend says, this thing looks like the symptoms of a um, heart attack. You have had an opinion that those words enter into you and then they begin to stir something inside you without your knowing. And to confirm it, you now pick up your device and Google pain in the chest, AI. AI will now give you wonders. In fact, after you finish reading it, you just prepare your dead bed. You say, everybody start bringing flowers here because I'm gone. <laughs> you know? And then, something that you do not have, words, put it there. Maybe it may just be one muscular whatever that you had. And then they tell you that this thing is sign of heart attack. That what they now start giving you statistics. And you know our generation is peeled for negatives. And that is what it seems people supply. So they give you statistics that 96% of those who suffer from heart attack never survive. Okay. How Many times we don't now ask, how about the 4%? We now focus on the 96. Say, hey, likely I will be part of this 96. And I'll fall into the uh, statistics of those who did not survive. And what the devil wants to do anytime he speaks to you is to release something that is called his warrant arrest officer called fear. Once you fear, you agree with him. Fear is agreement with your adversary. And once that happens, once you come in agreement, he can now inflict and afflict. He can now fortify what he wants to do. Once he says, he sees you've bought into fear. And how does he see that you've bought into fear? Your actions. By their fruit, you shall know them. Your actions. Once you begin to act, fearfully. He knows you've bought into his fear. Then he can begin to afflict. Once fear is not there, he has no ground for affliction. Are you getting my point? 
So she had. It is very important that when it comes to my being whole, I must be careful and scrutinize the sources that I allow to filter in through my ears. You see something that David did when he came to the battlefield in 1 Samuel chapter 17 and he started asking the people what um, will be done for the man who kills the giant. As he was doing that, the firstborn, their firstborn, Eliab, you know, interjected and started chiding him. Say, you, you naughty guy. What are you here? You just came here to watch the battle and whatever. Who did you leave those few sheep? You left them so that they will die again and whatever. So come on, get back to it. So something that David did, very instructive. He turned to the brother and said, is there not, what have, okay, look at that. What have I done now? Was it not a harmless question? Look at the next verse. Everybody, let's read it together. I want to go. And David turned away from Eliab to another. And he asked the same question. And again, the man gave him the same answer. There are sources if I must change my outcome in life, I must turn away from. Some of those sources are online. Some of them are my neighbors, my friends. I hope you know there are some friends that we keep. Anytime we have lofty aspirations and we come in contact with them, it dies. I think I told the story of a man, you know, one of our senior colleagues who saw a latest model Toyota Jeep Prado and said that that's his next car. Another staff touched him. And said that it's likely he has malaria. That that is how people that are developing malaria newly. That that's how they begin to. You know there are certain people you share your dreams with. That's the scorn on their face. Communicates to you that you are in the wrong place. In fact you have said something that is almost unpardonable. You must change what you have said. If you must be with them for such people or from such people you must turn away if you want your prognosis to be good you must turn away there's somebody listening to me you have listened to all the sources but god you have not listened to god and that is why your situation has continued you need to listen to the source that broadcasts from the dead heavens you need to listen to it and god has given us something that makes it easy for us to hear us he calls it the bible you see what that lady told young Cho? read this book study it for if you study it study it carefully you will find the words of life there is no source that broadcasts life except god's frequency every other source broadcasts something else Proverbs chapter 4 from verse 20. Proverbs 4 from verse 20. My son, give attendance or attention. Pay attention to my words. Attend to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. So keep your ears peeled for what I am saying. So the woman heard about Jesus. Somebody with an issue this morning is hearing about Jesus. And what did she hear about Jesus? Obviously, that Jesus was a healer. That he healed diseases. Because it's captured in Acts chapter 10 verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth that he went about doing good. And healing all those who were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. So she heard about the works of Jesus. Just like young Gicho started enumerating the things Christ came to do. In those places that we, start, we reviewed today. Do you remember? Yeah, that Christ came to heal. He saw in the scriptures Christ healing. He saw in the scriptures Christ doing this. So you need to hear that too. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Luke chapter 6 verses 17 and 18. Luke 6, 17. Look at what the Bible says. You see, that is the system God uses. And he came down with them and stood in the plain. And the company of his disciples... And a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem 
and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, which came to do what? Hear him and to be healed of their diseases. I hear first what is going to trigger the process of my healing starts with hearing. It is hearing about Jesus that builds faith in me to trust him to bring to pass what he has said in his word in my life. So faith connects me to the power of God and pulls the power of God into my life. But how does faith come? I must hear the words of Jesus. Jesus has not ceased being a healer. He has not. And he won't stop in your own case. He doesn't just heal bodies. He heals homes. He heals families. Healing is healing. No matter the dimension of healing. Are we together? Okay. So the woman heard something. Mind what you hear. Mind what you hear. Somebody gets pregnant. You know that pregnancy thing. Somebody gets pregnant newly. And goes for Antinata. I don't know for some of you who have been to Antinata. You are married. You have been to Antinata. You will hear different opinions of different gynecologists that didn't study it. You see different gynecologists by... Uh, <laughs> I don't know how they read their own course. Everybody... So... I remember when we had that. Was it the first or the second? That one they said, John this, John this, John first, John this, John this. Hey, the one was awkward, John this, awkward, Makwa Jaqua for the. We were looking for. We are medical people now. We were looking for. And we just came out from six weeks. Yes, six weeks immunization. Ah, they were saying, John the, John the, John the, John the, John the, John the. John the, John the. Now, we were looking for jaundice. We did not see jaundice. You say, how did these people see what we are not seeing? <laughs> jaundice from where? Where did the jaundice enter? How? I found a male mother who now carry the child, probably an hour, that jaundice were poor. Our boy, they said that there's something in his tongue that if we don't remove it, he will not talk. That we should have a piano, a car, but still, but a tinaka, one nose, tina, or a piano. He said, What is that? We went to our gynecologist. He said, There's, there's nothing there. We should go. Ah, I need one. I see now, I have not touched you. Who was your own one? I touched you. Now, boy, he's talking now. <laughs> He's even contributing in book review, doing whatever, even reading lesson. I don't understand. Now people talk and people hear things. You can finish hearing something now, you can't start seeing it in your spouse. Somebody tells you now, men has come all. Men, all men are cheat. What? You say, oh, my own man is not like that. Ah, it's because you've not discovered. You just finished that conversation. You now come home. You are looking at your husband like this. He goes into the bedroom. You quickly take his phone and search. And guess what? If you seek, you shall. You a student. Singing at this lecture at that Tawan theater, his course, if you are willing to pass, is either you sort or give yourself five more years. You hear that, and they start giving you statistics. You know, this type of thing comes with statistics. You know why it comes with statistics to make it settle in your mind, to make you to accept it, believe it. Because statistics have a a convincing power whether they did the research or not the point is that they will cook up something to make you are you getting my point yes they tell you um, you see five more years well 
it happened that you came into the wrong department. That's how we are seeing it. Except you change department. A lecturer that has not lectured you before. You don't even know. You start this, detesting him. When you now see him, he has not taught you anything. No. Just that like you heard about his course and heard negative things about him. He's not telling anything. And then you start. The first day he came to class, because of the things you've heard. Everything he said, you are not hearing it. What you are hearing is five years, five extra years, five extra years. You stay among business people, singing at this area. Obodo beware. Ndi none ayon. Ifane madirizi, nke dizi, ekwero mume. You are hearing it. You now one day get a shop. You want to start provision business. As you are stocking it, you are hearing it. Obodo biwe. Obodo biwe. <laughs> and that is where that conflict will be for five years. Because Obodo biwe. Are you getting my point? Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, mind what you hear. We were in this country. COVID came. Or COVID came. See us. We are here. Let another variant came. We will kill it. Africa is a burial ground for all viruses. Let them be coming. We will be killing it. If they like, let them manufacture new ones. If it comes to Africa, we will bury it here. Amen. Oh. Are we together? Okay, let me see what the next thing. Um, verse 28. Verse 28. Please. Okay, beautiful. The Bible said, after she heard that thing, the Bible now said, for she kept saying. She kept saying. She did not say once. She kept saying. She kept saying. And what was it she kept saying? It was in alignment with what she heard. She heard that Jesus was doing good and healing people. She now kept saying, If I only touch his garments, I shall also be healed just the way I heard he healed others. I will be among the others that he healed. He restored to health. Because I've heard he restores to health. So I am now saying... In accordance with what I've heard that produced faith in me. So there are two critical expressions of faith. The first is in words. The second is in action. So words are a sign that I believe. We having the same spirit of faith speak because we believe. So speaking is a sign. What I say will determine if I believe or not. So he said, if I can only touch, she kept saying it. And many times, you know, there are certain times we need healing from God. We need an intervention from God. We say it was maybe in the euphoria of the moment, that faith cloak or mantle comes on us and we declare certain things. But once we live there, what we now say becomes anti what we said under the environment of faith. We do not realize that that environment that created that type of confession is an environment I must sustain. If I don't sustain it, I will lose what I want to receive from God. Words plant, words water. God gives the increase. If I keep saying consistently what I've been saying ab initio, from the beginning, it will come to pass. If it's in our corners, that's why Hebrews chapter 10 verse 23. The Bible says, hold on to the profession of your faith without wavering. In Acts chapter 19 verse 20, so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Now, constant saying creates a picture in my mind based on what I'm saying. 
when I keep saying something, the picture is created in my mind. For instance, if I keep saying, I am healed in Jesus' name, I am healed in Jesus, and I'm lying on the bed, and I keep saying I'm healed, what it will create in my mind is a picture of someone who is out to walk, who is now integrating back into his or her family. I've been lying. There's somebody, you're on the sick bed. If you understand the functionality of what we're teaching now, and you begin to say it, I just give you 30 minutes, you'll be out of that bed. 30 minutes. You keep saying it. You keep saying it. That cancer will die. The word of God will grow to the extent that I keep saying it. Once I stop, that is where the, the growth stops. So mightily grew the word of God and did what prevailed, which means he's fighting against something. When we hear the word prevail, it means there's a contest. A contest. So the word is fighting against doubt. Is fighting against the opinions of men. Even the opinions of medical science. Is fighting against the opinions my, the science in my body are giving me. Is fighting against it. So if I keep saying it, the world starts growing and keeps fighting until it prevails. Because it will prevail if I maintain the profession of the faith without wavering. Are you getting the point? Let me look at the next one so that I can tie both of them. So after she said something, what next did she do? Okay. Then there is something we are now going to bring before we get here. The next thing she did was that she took corresponding action. She came in the press, verse 27. If you go to verse 27, you see it there. So, and she came up behind him in the throng and touched his garment. She did not allow anything to stop her. There is somebody here now. They have told you that this issue you have, it cannot be solved again. Just live with it. Don't allow the opinions of men to stop you. Get up. You must get up. Um, some time ago, while I was still an undergraduate, you know, the initial time that divine health was revealed to me. I need to tell this story. So, at that time, I began to preach not just divine health, but I was preaching academic excellence as well. I think I've told the story a little bit of academic excellence. How I was talking about it in the fellowship I joined. Fellowship I joined in school then. There were teachers. If you see what was coming out from the pulpit. Pulpit. A place where people, the preacher, will pull people from the pit. But now the reverse is the case. The preacher now pulls people back into the pit. Because what were some of the things that they were teaching then? That if you are faithful to God as a student, you will have one or two references. That's carryovers. Then if you are exceptionally faithful, you have two or three extra years. It was coming from the pulpit. Yes, I was in the service. Not that somebody told me. I was in the service. I heard it. It was like scorpion, sting. I said, no, it can't be. It can't be. By then, I got my first four points in first year. Second four point in, in second semester. First year, second, first and second semester. Four, four points. Without stress. I joined the fellowship in my first semester, second year. I said, it can't be. Is it not the God I served in first year that gave me four, four points? How can he give you this thing? Carry over if you are faithful. How can God give you carry over when you are faithful? I don't get it. It's just like God giving you tuberculosis to teach you humility. If your earthly father cannot do that, your earthly father even wants you to graduate from school fast so that he stops spending money. How can God now, God, because you are faithful, I don't get it. It's a lie. Fact is a lie. I started talking about it and they came against me. No, I was even dressing like uh, one bubble like that using suspension. 
So the nurse let tell, calling me Kana Christian, and after a while, they started calling me Bobo, Bobo and Kitty. That's what they started calling me. So one day, I was talking with their national prayer secretary, and we were discussing this thing on, um, what is it called? Uh, academic excellence. He said, no, that God Almighty can use one course. You fail it to teach you something. I said, it's not the God I serve. Do you have another version of God? Maybe your God is still evolving. He has not come to where my God is. Let him keep evolving. Let him follow Charles Darwin's theory and come to where my God is. My God, has, my God is God. And as far as I know, he doesn't give people carryover. As I was talking about it, the next thing I had on my cheek was a dirty slab. The slab, I don't know whether I washed his hands, but I think it was a dirty one. That day, I saw in practical terms, that type of thing we see in cartoon or whatever, stars. I saw vision. I was seeing things in another dimension. The slab, that slab, even till now, I think I am still feeling it. It was later when I got to Newi, he did an open apology to me. He said he didn't know what I was talking about at that time. By the time he was doing his apology, he was already the owner of a massive business and cyber cafe. He has started implementing some of these academic excellence, whatever, and you know, he apologized openly. You can imagine how long it took him to understand it. So, that one evening, I started feeling something and I was on a three-day fast. You know, our fasting in those days, you can't be fasting and drinking water. If you fast and drink water, you are not a believer. You are a carnal Christian. Not to talk of fasting and eating fruits. You have backslid. In fact, you are working with the devil now. Fasting that we call fasting. Without water. You go without water. You finish your eyes with bulging like this. Because we learned that every power man must be a bushman. If you don't go to the bush, you won't carry power. So everybody was looking for bush. So one of the three day fast and then I was supposed to go for a meeting. So along the line, I started feeling whatever, some signs, symptoms of malaria and all that. And I was even, I would go to that bush where we used to pre pray. I will pray and go and vomit. But there will be nothing to vomit. It was the second day. And I kept doing that. Then I came back that night and covered myself in a bag. So some well-meaning sisters came to see me, you know, welfare. They told me, brother CC, in the night around 7 p.m., you know, in my hostel, they told me, brother CC, you know this thing you are preaching, you know it's not biblical. This thing you are preaching about divine health. It's not biblical. That God can give you disease to teach you something. He can do that. That uh, if you look at this man of God, the story of this man of God, the man of God said that God gave him blindness to teach him how not to look lustfully at a woman. Then the other one, he removed all his teeth <laughs> to help him curtail gluttony. Then the other one, he gave him running stomach to teach him a lesson not to be, you know, and to fast. So they were telling me in non sincerity. <laughs> I kept listening, listening, listening. After a while, I said no. Something told me if you remain here, you will resort to drugs. I removed my blanket. I told them, when you finish, lock my door. I'm going to class. I left them there. Because that thing told me if you are believing that my, by my stripes you are healed, you should not be lying in bed. It's because you are lying in bed, you are attracting these people. Get off from there. And I got up. I told them, see you in night class. I left for class. Do you know, the moment I sat down to read, all the symptoms disappeared. The power of God is released at the point of my obedience. Once I take action in line with the word of God, it unlocks the power of God. 
So he said, uh -uh, you are not here, he do see the tumor. See, I'm going now for testimony. You are not, I said, you are not here, stay back or you're going to shape. I'm going now for testimony. You know, when the devil sees this type of thing, he wants to stop you. You are running out for that. How many people have testimony? You are coming out. The tumor is still there. You are coming out with the tumor. I said, now nah, this person like this. You know, there's one case. You know, on the I went to a three-day fast again. I was supposed to go to Mbaku for a healing, a weekend healing meeting. So, on the second day, I started having this malaria, whatever again. And then, the same experience, vomiting, I had to call, you know, OJ. I had to call her to meet me there at Horeb. So I said, OJ, stop praying for me. I'm dying. That's what I told her. I'm dying. So I will pray. Go on for me. Pray. Go on for me. Go on. She was praying for me. After that day, the next day I said, didn't eat. Because it was supposed to be three days. And I was supposed to go for the meeting fasting. By the third day, it was as though three, three hefty men with Monday hammer were grinding and hitting it on my head. I got to the venue. I was supposed to be the second speaker. So after the first person has finished, told them to remove their fanciful eyeglasses. God told me, when you get there, tell them that I will touch their eyes and heal every eye defect. I say, yes, sir. But my head. I say, Lord, if this headache doesn't come out from my life, if I get to the podium, I will distribute it. I said, remember, Lord, is what I have you, I give. Guess what? When I was walking to the stage, as I was walking, as I got to the stage, it lifted. Anyway, God knows my seriousness. He knows that once I come in there, that's what I will give everybody. Everybody, you must, you know, bear one another's body. And so fulfill the law of Christ. Are you getting the point? It lifted. I look for it. Midway into the preaching, people, you remember that meeting? People came out with, I didn't tell them. I didn't tell them. Suddenly they discovered they could see. Came out with their eyeglasses. It happened at one other secondary school. I came back with pocket load of eyeglasses. People came out and were submitting their eyeglasses because once they take off their eyeglasses, they could see clearly. The next person would take off, could see clearly. The next person would take off, could see. They started coming to the stage even before I finished preaching and dropped their eyeglasses and went back. We finished the meeting. We said, come and take your eyeglasses. They all left, left with, without their eyeglasses. We were left with uh, the challenge of what to do with eyeglasses. <laughs> and it will happen here now. Hey, there's somebody, there's somebody that's going to take action now. You are going to jump, look for that thing. That thing that made you unable to jump. You are going to jump in spite of it. Because that is the corresponding action to faith. Are you getting my points? And she pressed and touched. And what happened? She received her healing. And after she received her healing, she testified of her healing. But there's something we are going to do now. We have heard about Jesus. Now, what is it that we'll keep saying? There's something we are going to say now. And then an action we are going to take. As we are saying it, we are acting it. As we are saying it, we are acting it. In the name of Jesus, I am here. You are watching. You are on the sick bed. As you are saying it, stand up. Don't lie. Sit saying it. Say it and get up from the bed. You have a cast on your leg. I've mentioned that before. As you are saying it, get up. Leave your clutches. Get up because we want to hear your testimony. Send it online. We'll take it. Remove that. Go to the doctors. Let them, let them, okay, fulfill all righteousness. Let them check. Scan your leg. Do x-ray. You see your bones have healed completely. Remember what Jesus told the woman. It is your faith that has made you whole. It's your faith. It's your faith. You are looking at pastor to heal you. It's not pastor that heals you. It's your faith. It is your faith, oh, it is your faith. You watching me is your faith. You see your marriage is your faith that will heal that marriage. Is your faith. 
Your faith is what brings the healing, draws the healing into your experience. Is your faith. If it is absent, then your healing is not in view. That is why, first of all, the person needs to hear about Jesus to be able to do that, to build that faith and connect to the power of God so that the person can be healed. Now, there's somebody here that's going to speak and keep speaking. You are not going to say it once. There's something you are struggling with. Maybe it's fear. You will repeatedly say, for God has not given me the spirit of fear but of love, of power, and of a sermon. For God has not, this, in this case, repetition is allowed because you have to maintain the profession of faith without wavering. You must keep saying it. For she kept saying, for she kept saying, what have you been saying? It is determining your outcome. What have you been saying? Is somebody about to speak? Now we are going to speak. Please, if you have mouth, speak. Speak in accordance with what you have heard about Jesus. In accordance with the word of God. In accordance with whatever issue you have, find in the word of God the antidote. And begin to speak it. Begin to speak it. Begin to speak it. This is not a time for stretching. This is a time for speaking. Speak. You don't understand have you not heard that the memory of the just is blessed have you not heard that god has given you sound mind can't you say can't you alter oh can't you alter something you have heard that is making you weak weakening your commitment to god weakening your faith in god weakening your motivation to go forward in life can't you say something contrary that will not build that faith again give you the courage to search forward in spite of the economy let the poor say I am rich my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus is somebody saying something is somebody saying something somebody is speaking somebody is speaking just like the woman did she kept saying for she kept saying if you close your mouth, your destiny closes. If you open your mouth, your destiny opens. Life yields to those who can consistently speak right. Somebody is speaking. Somebody is speaking. Speak loud enough. You know the Bible says, for she kept saying. Speak loud enough that it will create the desired picture in your mind. Speak in such a way that it will create the picture of what you want in your mind. You can see it. Your speakings are creating pictures in your mind. The corresponding pictures. If your home is shaking, oh my God, my God, my God. Didn't the Bible say that, have you not heard, do you not know that the everlasting God, he never faints, he never grows weary. He even gives strength to those that faint and strength to those that are weary. You can speak strength. Your father said he's tired, he's not doing it again. Your mother said he's tired, she's not doing it again. There's someone that gives strength. You can speak to bring back strength. You have children, for instance. You have children. The Bible said children are an heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is reward. The fruit of the womb is not a source of grief. It's not a source of bitterness. It's not a source of, you know, sadness. It's a source of joy. Speak to your children. Speak God's word to your children. Speak over your children. This child, you are an excellent child. You are a reward from God. And the blessing of God, it makes rich. You are making me rich. Rich in happiness. Rich in joy. Rich in fulfillment. You are making me rich because your light will shine in obscurity. And darkness will not overcome it. You will not suffer for other man's mistakes. Whatever 
is your issue, speak to it and keep speaking. Keep speaking. you are here you are not born again you are not born again you cannot consistently speak right until your nature is right a dog cannot mew neither can a cat back it's not in their nature you cannot speak what is right till your heart is right and your heart is right by surrendering it to Jesus Christ if you are here, you are not born again, and you want to get born again, please come to the altar. Come and meet me. Come and meet me at the altar. Quickly, quickly. Do that quickly. We are going to the communion table. Everybody has to go to the communion table as brand new men and women. If you are watching from any of our branches, and you are not born again, you want to get born again, please stand up on your feet, and somebody is going to lead you to Christ right where you are. And if you are somewhere where nobody can do that for you, put your hand on your chest. And ask Jesus to come into your life to be your Lord and Savior. And He's going to come in. He'll give you a brand new heart so that you can speak brand new things. But if you are here, you are not born again. Come, come quickly so that we will get you over to Jesus' side. You'll become a child of God. Come quickly. We don't have much time. Anyone like that in this assembly, as the window is still open, please come. Come quickly. Some people are looking at me. You don't need to look at me. If you're coming, come. Please come. There's a window for you. And Jesus wants to receive you as his own. Please come. Come, 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 come. From wherever you are, come. Please come before we go to the communion table. took the bread and broke it and said take it every one of you this is my body broken for you do this in remembrance of me and after they had supped he lifted up the cup and gave thanks said this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the remission of sins this do as often as you do it in remembrance of me father we thank you for the bread and for the wine there are unto us the body and the blood of your son respectively lord as we take it let everything that jesus died to purchase for us healing wholeness that peace of mind serenity on our inside let all those things be revitalized in us in the name of jesus let the life because the life of every animal is in the blood let the life of jesus in this blood swallow up everything that is inconsistent with it in our own lives imparting in our lives the very characteristics of the divine nature in the name of jesus as we take this let cancers disappear Amen. let ear problems disappear now i'm calling cases there are some cases i saw earlier let every bone issue be healed Amen. let pain on the waist pain at the spinal cord at the back region that spinal region 
pain around the neck, pain in the chest, pain in the leg, let it disappear. In the name of Jesus, let every eye defect be corrected. Corrected now by the reason of the communion. In the name of Jesus, leukemia disappears now. Hemia is gone. Prostatitis, yeah, prostatitis disappears right now. In the name of Jesus, high blood pressure comes back to normal. High glucose level in the blood comes back to normal. In the name of Jesus, diabetes disappears. There is somebody here. Anytime you read, it's as though there's a cloud in your head. It's a cloud. Sometimes it's like things are flying around inside your brain. Things are flying. By the reason of this communion, that cycle ends now. In the name of Jesus. There's one more case I've not called. Those people that are expecting the fruit of the womb. By the reason of this communion. If you are joining us online, get your whatever. Get water. If you don't have wine, non-alcoholic wine or malt or whatever drink, get water, get bread or biscuit. Because we are blessing everything together. You take it. If you are believing God for a fruit, the fruit of the womb, after this communion, go and meet your husband. By this time next year, we are going to get your testimony. According to the season of life. In fact, for some people, I speak strength into your womb. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 11, that by faith, Sarah receives strength to conceive with seed. Therefore, I speak strength into your womb. Hold your womb. Hold if you are part of those who hold your womb. I speak strength. You are going to experience the power of God. It will come on you. I speak strength into your womb to conceive seed. In the name of Jesus. Receive your children. Go and meet your husband after now. You are taken in. And the baby will stay. Decide the amount. You want twins. If it's two boys, two girls, a boy and a girl. If you want quadruplets, you want whatever. Decide it. Decide it. Thank you, Father. The body of Christ keep us on to eternal life. The blood of Christ keep us unto eternal life. Amen. Once you take the communion, speak. The communion was established on speakings. That's why when Jesus took the bread, he blessed it and said. When he took the cup, he blessed it and said. So the communion was established on words. Words. Once you take it, begin to speak. And cause anything that is inconsistent with the nature of Christ that is you are experiencing. Cause it. Let it die. You are given to fear cause cast out that spirit whatever addiction as you take the communion command those chairs to break let them break the power in the blood is such a power that liberates said in Zechariah, i think it's chapter nine as so thee by the blood of thy covenant I have released thy prisoners out of the well wherein is no water. The blood releases. The blood releases. The blood releases. So once you take the communion, speak. 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 Don't keep quiet. Speak.
I said hallelujah. Did anybody get anything this morning? Now we're going to take testimonies, but not today. We're going to take testimonies within the week and then next Sunday. Please get your testimonies ready because this is very important. While I was thinking about the month of March, you know, there was a discussion I got into with my wife and there's something the Lord said to tell you about the month of March. And while I was praying on the 29th of February into the 1st of March, he confirmed the same thing. Usually when God tells me something, I ask him to show me in the scriptures. So this is what he showed me. Exodus chapter 14 from verse 10 to 16. I want to show that, you know, just before we go. Exodus chapter 14, 10 to 16. Very quickly, please. Very quickly, please. When Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked up. And behold, the Egyptians were marching after them. And the Israelites were exceedingly frightened and cried out to the Lord. Look at the next verse. And they said to Moses, Is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you treated us this way and brought us out of Egypt? Look at the next verse. Did we not tell you in Egypt, let us alone? Let us serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. Look at the next verse. Moses told the people, fear not. Stand still, firm, confident, undismayed, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. When? Today. When? Today. Let's read that ending one together. One to go. For the Egyptians you have seen today, you shall never. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor that. For the Egyptians... You have already seen the Egyptian. So look at the Egyptian very well because you'll never see the Egyptian again. But that's not what the Lord said to tell you. Look at the next verse. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace and remain at rest. Usually the people that God fights for are those that are at peace. If you start struggling, God leaves you till you exhaust your strength. When you now come to the end of yourself, that is when he starts. So it's good to come to the end of yourself early so that you can start early in your case. Okay, look at the next verse. Now, this is what the Lord said to tell TPW. The Lord said to Moses, why do you cry out to me? Tell the people of Israel to do what? The Lord said to tell you to go forward. This month of March, the Lord said to tell you to go forward. I won't, the, the, we don't have the luxury of time to talk about some of the things that these things imply, but let me tell you about one thing. This go forward is a command. And we are soldiers. So. Where is that song again? The voice of my commander, oh Jesus, if you call my name, I will answer a billion. Wait up, wait up, wait up. Waiting to hear what? What has your commander said? To, as a soldier, will you obey or not? Let me ask you again. What has your commander said? I think you should talk with about two, three persons. Tell them, your commander says, go forward.
says, go forward in spite of the circumstance. Say you want to start a narrow airpoint and you have been thinking how you start. He says, go forward. There's a project you would want to start. You look at your pocket. There's nothing. What did he say? Did he look at your pocket before asking you to go forward? God did not consult your pocket to ask you to start the project. Because, oh, I don't know who I'm speaking to now. I don't know. You've abandoned it for a long time. The word is coming now. To do what? You have dropped out from school. Do what? Go for Come back to school. You want to drop out. You want to quit. What should you do now? This is the month of going forward. No backward movement. No backward movement. Forward ever. God knows when he asks you to go forward that you will meet opposition. For instance, before them, the rest see. Behind them, Egyptians. All around the mountains, what shall they do? And the Red Sea wasn't even trying to shift. Neither were the Egyptians trying to consider going back. They were forcefully advancing. And the Red Sea was there, looking them in the eye and said, come and cross. But God told Moses, raise your rod and divide the sea. He didn't say, I will divide it. He said, you divide it. God has given you something. That is why he asked you to go for God doesn't place demands where he hasn't made deposits. He has given you power and authority and he wants you to use it. Any obstacle you meet, stretch your rod. Pull out your rod, not complain. Divide and decimate the challenge. Are you getting the point? Because once he says go forward, he has increased you in capacity to surmount challenges. You know, there's a song we sang, go, oh, there's a song we sang is that bigger every day, bigger every day. Living for his glory, I'm on fire every day. Yes. And nothing can stop me because no matter what I face, I am getting bigger every day. in my life and living for his glory I'm on fire every day and nothing can stop me doesn't matter what I face I am getting bigger oh getting bigger oh getting bigger getting bigger every day bigger every day getting bigger every day bigger every day no limitations we're taking over we getting bigger every day Hallelujah. How many people have just got bigger? You are now bigger. You are now no limitations. Look at your neighbor, say no limitations. Tell the person, don't let anything limit you. You are bigger than that thing. Tell the person, were you thinking of committing suicide? Now, suicide will think of committing you. <laughs> are you getting the point? Tell the person you are bigger than suicide. You are bigger than discouragement. You are bigger than that complaint. Shout at the person, no limitations. You are taking over. Give somebody a high five. Take over, take over, take over, take over, take over. Take over your fears, take over your uncertainties, take over your situation, take over whatever. Amen. Let's give to God excitedly. Let's give to God excitedly. Father, we thank you for what is in our hands. You've done so much for us. And out of much you've done for us, we are bringing this little. We ask, O oh God, that you receive us and receive our presence. And bless us, O oh God. Let this month be a month of forward ever movement for everyone here in jesus name amen if you don't have cash you can make transfers there are account details on the screen and on our social media handles you can make transfers
Please, if you have your tights, come forward. Please, let's take the tights. You have your tights, please approach. Father, we are very grateful for the opportunity you've given us to respond to the command you've given in your word. As we bring the hallowed things from our houses to your own house, so they will be meat in your house. Let our houses also not lack meat. In the name of Jesus Christ, bless us with the blessing of obedience to your word for everyone, even those who brought it through the banks and branches. Let that blessing rest on us all. And Lord, rebuke the devourers for our sakes. Open the windows of heaven, pour on us a blessing we won't have room enough for until our land becomes a delightsome land. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. So, there's something we're going to revamp very quickly. Next Sunday, we're going to restart our accountability groups. Next Sunday. And there are certain touches we want to put into it, you know, to um, re-strategize on how to make it more productive and effective. We would have started today, but we need to put a little touch to it. So, by next Sunday, please anticipate next Sunday. It's going to be a bomb. By next Sunday, we'll start it. And you'll be happy at the adjustments we made. Just the way we did. God enabled us to do in HCDC. I hope you know HCDC continues tomorrow. Please, remember, keep saying things that are in accordance with the word of God. So mightily we'll grow the word of God and do what? Prevail. God bless you. So we all be make success in loud now. Bigger and bigger and bigger and we like a real and we are on fire. And this is the life we've chosen, the rolling and the Holy Ghost. Higher we go, we will never stop you. There's the spirit of the life in me, the spirit of the Lord that is taking me to levels we have never been before. I've got joy like the river, shopping life. We have to go easy things down. And we bigger, and bigger, and bigger, 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 bigger.
house today. Can you give the Lord a shout of praise? Whoa! I don't know how many of us are already anticipating what March has for you. Even with the word that our pastor just gave us, we are moving forward. He says, go forward beyond whatever limitation. Of course, there is no limitation. Hallelujah. Can we graciously have our seat? To push the service forward, we want to welcome our first timers. You know, today is your first time of joining us. It's already a glorious service. I know you can feel it wherever it is you're sitting down. Today is your first time of joining us for service in the Portals Well International Christian Center. There's a special welcome for you. Please, can you give me a wave wherever you are? We want to recognize you in a special way. Give us a wave. Can you be on your feet? Do well to stand on your feet. Do well to stand on your feet. Wherever you are, please, can you go up on them? Give them the ticket of you welcome. the Brothers of International Christian Center. We are glad to have you. You see how colorful today's service has been. You added to it and you are welcome. God bless you, RP. God bless you for the song. <laughs> okay, just like you heard Pastor announce, please you can have your seat our first timers. Please immediately we share the grace. We would like to have you sit here at this column. We have a special message for you. We have a special information to deliver to you. Please, once we share the grace and fellowship, please come to this column of the church and have your seat. Of course, tomorrow is Monday, and from um, tomorrow, the session of HCDC continues. HCDC is Human Capital Development College. In case you're hearing it for the first time, the session is already ongoing, and it's been a wonderful, wonderful world. I want to hear HCDC students speak. It's two weeks now, we're entering the third week, right? And it's been a wonderful one for each and every one of us. So we're continuing tomorrow at 4.30. Please make sure you put it in your schedule and be here right on time. Of course, the transformation has already begun in our lives. On Wednesday, Wednesday is our faith clinic, which is the booster dose. Please, you see what you received today, you have more understanding to what you heard today to even this word that our father just gave to us on Wednesday. So please make sure to come. Let nothing limit you. Let nothing stop you. If you've been struggling to be here for faith clinic, you know the word that just came from pastor, go forward. So you're going beyond, that you should go forward and then be here on Wednesday. The time is 4.30 p.m. in the evening. Please, you can schedule it as you are planning your day, whether you're going to work or school. Have it in your schedule and then you'll be here. Once you have it in your mind that you want to be here, that you want to attend Faith Clinic, you will be here. On Thursday, we are meeting on air. It's Ladies Circle with FC. I saw someone excited as I, as I announced Ladies Circle. Maybe he's already doing something in her life. Please, if you've not been joining, as far as you are within the environment of Orca, you can join online. You can tune into Radio Unizik 94.1 FM, wherever you are. Please make sure to hook up. It is very, very important that you do so. There are some awesome series that have been ongoing. And, of course, we have a special guest that has been joining in the person of our pastor, Pastor C.C. Equagana. Please, wherever you are, you can join online. Of course, you can still join the live stream on Facebook. You can even revisit the old um, the podcast that has already been going on all this while. Just type Lady Circle with FC. A lot of information will come up on that. On Friday is our prayer service. If you've not been joining prayer service, I don't know how many of us that were here on Friday. Our pastor has been taking us on a service, gaining mastery. Please, you need it. You know, to be able to function well in the fourth dimension this year, you need every of this teaching. You need every of this meeting. There's something is depositing in each and every one of us. Please be here for prayer service 
by 4 30 p.m on friday while on saturday is our creativity department meeting it begins by 3 p.m please if you've not joined a department yet you have to join a department please make sure to do so before leaving here this morning make sure to join a department it will do a lot of good to you particularly on sunday is our transformational service of course for many of us that met this um this morning at 6 a.m when we began pastor has been taking us on on the love series and it's been wonderful it's been mind-blowing please as in it's something that is giving us is, is something that is shifting our mindset to whatever it is we've known all this while that we are growing up please make sure to be here for this um series it's something that is wonderful it's, it's not something you should miss at any point in time please be here 6 a.m the love series continues it's going to be a transformational service and of course you can start inviting people even from now you can start preparing for service please can we be on our feet can we be on our feet as we share the grace please have something in mind have something in mind make sure you do not forget this word that just came it is something you need to re-say to yourself over and over again it should be words it's, it should overshadow any other thing any other voices that is speaking to you can we share the grace in fellowship surely We should dwell in the house of the Lord for uh, yeah. Amen.